Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we're going to find out if it's still the king. King whetstones have been iconic. For some people, I think that they're like a cult. Um, king whetstones are definitely an amazing stone that is affordable. Um, it, if you're going to start off uh, with whetstones, whetstone sharpening, this is definitely one of the ways that you could get into it. And so today, as you can see, these are all brand new. We have a wide variety of the lineup of King Whetstone. And uh, so we're going to talk about King. I'm going to use them myself for the very first time. I have not used them at all. The knife that we're going to be using today is definitely a household favorite. This is an R2 SG2 um, Damascus by um, Camo. It has a pie cutlery custom handle. I'm only saying all that because I know you guys are going to ask. So um, you have definitely saw me in a video where I talked about sharpening R2 steel. So I'll definitely put a link in the description and a link above in the video. So this R2 Damascus is definitely gorgeous. Um, the house has definitely loved the kind of like stainless feature of this steel. Uh, this is a very dense, heavy kind of, a, it just feels like amazing. So I'm excited since I have sharpened this knife and I've got, I've gotten the opportunity to sharpen this knife. I'm excited to do it today. So let's just go ahead and talk about the lineup that we have here for you. So when you look at King Whetstones, if you look at all the different boxes you have in front of you, they can look like everything like straight out of Japan with no English on them, except for the word King trademark. Um, so this would be the 300, which you see is not a soaking stone. At least that's what I'm told by all the websites that, that we have out there. Um, when we go over to like the King 1000 and the King 2000, you will see that they are soaking stones. And it says that I needed to soak them for at least 15 minutes. So if you're new to wet stones, there are some stones that you soak and some that you do not. And one of the funny things is we got a little clip earlier. I'll definitely put it above is when you put them in, you'll definitely see the, um, what's the word that my wife used? Like effervescence, effervescence, effervescence of the stones as like bubbles are happening as the stones are absorbing the water. Okay. So um, if you look at the 1000 and the 2000, the, the 2000 has the like King hyper written on it as if it's like another line. You'll definitely see as well that they, they, they look different. I do want to point out that the 1000, this, this is kind of like iconic red color for them. So this particular stone um, comes in like the 300, the 1800, 1000. Um, it might, I know it comes in just so many actual um, grits. And so if you wanted to stay, this is definitely an inexpensive line. So it's something that everyone loves. It's absolutely you know, easy to work with when everyone... Um, so I'm excited to get into it. Then you'll come over here and you'll see some of these bigger boxes. They're a little more glamorous. These are the S ones. These are the supers. Um, so we have the super. We have this gold super over here. These actually come on a base. Okay. And they do not need to be soaked. So I definitely wanted to show you. Um, is it attached? It is attached. The base comes on it. It does not come apart. Thank you for the wife asking those newbie questions for those of you who don't know. So um, if, if you didn't, if you, if you just had like your counter, you could use it. So this is a 6,000, 8,000. And um, for those of you who are knife nerds, I will go ahead and point out real quick that the 8,000 is known to be a little softer than the Katayama 8,000. So it's a little more forgiving. As a matter of fact, all of these stones are a little bit softer, so to speak. And that has also led to the lure from what I'm reading in all the forums is that they, they do wear out and dish out a little bit more than other. I think at the price point that you're saving, you can afford to buy the next one. But I would, I would have to point out that, I mean, it's a pretty big stone. So it's going to take a while. Uh, obviously, there are size differences. Not only, let's see, the length. The length is about the same. The width is definitely different. Um, the thickness is a little bit more on the red end, and the red ones are, like I said, are a little bit less expensive. So for the, if you're learning to sharpen and you want to get some whetstones, supposedly this is where you start. I'm going to have fun with this today. So what we have is we have an amazing knife. We have the 
I'm, I'm going to let you guys know because I know I'm going to get it in the, in the comments. You're always born to ask. We're going to use the iconic cast fly sink bridge. And then we are going to definitely do some sharpening tests on the cutting board that we need to know about. This is the Hasegawa. Um, it's a rubber poly plastic like enclosed Japanese cutting board. Um, I just got it. I'm like super excited to use it. Um, so I'm, I'm anxious to show that to you as well, that we'll have a video on that and I'll come back and put it in there when we do videos on cutting boards. We've got a lot of, a uh, lot of cutting boards in so we can get that video out for you. So as you know, like with someone like me and chances are my knives are like not dull. So it pains me that I'm going to actually have to like, you know, dull the knife. Um, it did get used. So you saw it did catch a little. So I'm kind of, kind of. I feel it makes me feel a little bit better that I don't have to, you know. So it doesn't sound like amazing. So I don't have like an actual house brick. I have this, um, this Amakusa stone that I'm going to grimace as I do this. But we are going to um, definitely dull this knife. Um, I don't know how many passes we'll do. Definitely like 20. We'll even go the other direction. Okay, so while I'm doing this, I'll let you know that uh, you saw that some of the stones that we have are soaking and some are not. So for those of you who don't know, like I said, some of them that need to be soaked, they need to absorb water. The ones who are not, they're called splash and goes. So when you're buying something, you might see that phrase splash and go and um usually a splash and go is a little bit more expensive yep, yeah so okay i mean it's dull really, really michelle I, yeah i know he is. you know I, so Something that I did not get prepared for that I will grab real quick is a flattening stone. So let me figure out where that is real fast. We might transition into me. I'm finding this flattening stone real fast. Oh, there they are. You know, it's right there. I'm better, pre better prepared than I thought it was. So we have the Atoma 400. And so... I'm, I'm not going to trust that the stone has been flattened. Okay. I'm going to, for, I'm going to preserve the icon. I'm going to use the bottom. Okay. So let's get this cast fly. If you haven't seen it, I definitely have uh, videos on the sink bridges. Um, this thing is a monster. It's amazing. So we'll go ahead and set that up. Stones. Let's make sure the stone does not rock. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So my wife might hand me a pencil. That would be great. And um, what we're going to do, for those of you who've never seen this before, when you need to flatten a stone, one of the things that you're going to need to do is draw some lines on the stone. And in doing that, thank you, in doing that, you're going to know where your high parts are and your low if it's, um, if it's uneven. So, it came pretty good, I got to say. It's pretty fast. So, already I can tell just from my first time ever using it that it got like a really nice mud on it. I did expect that with a softer stone. So, and I'm going to actually have to flatten every stone. So I'm glad the pencil is handy. So, um, you know what? The knife is dull. I got a little ahead of myself. We're going to grab a splash and go, which is a 300. So when I went to put this in a sink bridge, I can tell it doesn't fit. So the first thing that tells me is it's just a little off on the dimensions.
There we go. So if it's a splash and go, you literally splash water and you go. So this, this video isn't necessarily like meant to be a sharpening video. I'm going to sharpen a knife. I've definitely got sharpening videos. I'll put links in the description. Sharpening on a budget, sharpening on natural stones, sharpening R2 steel. I'll put all of them in there for you. I do have another video I'm getting to come out with, which is if you sharpen professionally. Um, so I'm going to be shooting that very soon. We got that coming up. So I will point out some things, but the purpose of today is to test out the stones, not necessarily teach all things sharpening. So, it nope, it's not drying out at all. My wife was asking, is it drying out? You can tell that it's, it's staying wet. I mean, I don't have water anywhere else. So this first stone is a 300. It sounds like it, and it feels like it. It definitely has like a, like a gravel road feel to it. Okay. You guys don't know this. I'm laughing because my wife is figuring out like she's director, producer, you know, she's figuring out what camera angle are we going to do? And trying not to get in the other side. Uh, we appreciate you. You might see me. So, there is a little bit of a slurry that you would expect. Maybe I would have thought there would have been more of a slurry. Um, not that I need there to be. There are some black lines that you can... Not, not lines, but there's definitely some dark material on the stone. And um, so, I'll just say this real quick. I am not pressing. This is a highly... like This, uh, this stone has got a grit. It is coarse. I do not need to press this knife like into uh, into this stone. I mean, this thing is, it sounds aggressive. Let's see if it is aggressive. So um, very rapidly, I already have the bevel on this side. It's a 300 grit stone. I mean, it definitely should have already happened. My fingers are just resting the weight of gravity. I'm not pushing. Now, I'll point this out real quick. I'm not going to talk about it in the video, but there are definitely plenty of sharpeners who would sharpen this side this way. They would actually pull towards themselves. I, I think it's beautiful to watch them do it. It's not something that I'm necessarily acclimated to doing. I, I just normally flip my hand over. Um, beautiful to watch them. I'm always like happy to see them do it. So, again, this is a really big stone. Uh, so the price point on this, you know, very inexpensive. I would normally tell you that your the knife that you're sharpening on this or whatever tool needs to be extremely dull. Um, I would normally not start with the 300. Maybe if I was trying to turn a butter knife into a sharp knife, might start here. Okay, that was like, whoa. Okay, so again, definitely. I mean, I have a 220 Shapton glass. That feels less aggressive than that 300. So just kind of pointing that out for those of you who are Shapton fans and you kind of know. So let's adjust this. Get it all tightened up. Let's make sure there's no slurry from the last stone. We don't want to contaminate that. Okay, so now this 1000, it feels like a 1000. It actually feels kind of smooth. And I will tell you coming off that 300, I mean, it feels like glass compared to that, that 300. Now, King also makes combo stones. So if you're just getting into it, a lot of times you might be able to buy one stone that has multiple grits that you're able to flip over. Again, that might save you some money. And if you don't sharpen all the time, that might be all you need your entire life. If you're a professional sharpener, it's nice to have these bigger stones. I'm glad that they offer them so big. Okay. You saw that was pretty fast. I mean, we've got a great knife. It really shouldn't take that long. I normally might be wouldn't even need all of these. I definitely want to feel them all and give you the feedback.
I mean, that was pretty fast. I mean, I think it's pretty fast. Um, again, there'll be another video on like if you sharpen professionally. I, I might have, I might have already had that uh, burr faster than I knew. I do say that sometimes um, people don't actually aren't sharpening 50-50. They'll they'll kind of flip over and get a burr really quick. That's going to be another video coming up about like are, you know, are people really sharpening 50-50. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump up to the 2000. Again, noticeably different in the thickness. Let's get the slurry of the 1000 off. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do logo down. Just to, you know, to keep it looking pretty. I'm that person, sorry. Okay. I did not level, I just realized that I did not flatten the 300. We got it done. I did flatten the 1000 before I used it. I said I was gonna flatten them all. So, let's get to it. This is definitely gonna show you, you know, what that looks like. So the Atoma. You can see right off the bat, well, maybe it was a little bit unlevel, like at this end. So, I'm not saying that you have to, to, there's plenty of people who do not believe you need to flatten your stone. I think I could have sharpened the knife easily without flattening my stone. There are certain knives, single bevel knives, the Unagaba, the um, Deba, like those knives that have a, a hollow grind on the backside. It's something that you need to be aware of. I'll do a separate video. That was just a quick thing. But, um, okay. So, right off the bat, we get some color on the stone. I'm sure it's easy to see in the camera from the contrast. Um, feels amazing. I will say that. Um, so, we just jumped from a 1,000 to a 2. This is a nice stone. I like the 2. That's my, my initial just gut is I like the two. Now you guys saw me recently do, uh, I talked about lots of, lots of new stones. I talked about the Morihe stones. I got to tell you, I feel like they're like the Porsche of stones right now. Um, yeah, I mean, it was like, I didn't even think about it. Like I just, <laughs> the, it is nice to have a good knife to sharpen. Okay, so something I'll point out since there is like a slurry building up on here is, um, by the way, this one does not need to soak. I put it in there to kind of clean it, but that's going to the point that I was about to make. Um, make sure the bevel's even. So you do not put this up with that slurry. We do not let that slurry dry onto the stone. That is an issue. So make sure... You know, if you're not putting it back into water to soak it, and even when you take it out of the water after soaking it, um, make sure that all the slurry is off and that let you that you let it dry clean. I don't want to damage that really great edge I just did by bumping it into a stone. So you can see there's definitely, you know, particles that will rest on your stone. When we go to put the stone away, we do not let that dry that way. Okay. Get those out for the visual that you guys are going to need in a little bit. I moved that around because my wife, without even saying, I already knew she would have reorganized it. So, so we are now jumping up. So the next stones have their own base. So that's going to make this pretty wide. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and be kind of prepared for that. This is not a soaking stone. So we're jumping up to the 6,000. And I'm glad this cast fly and this pond, it, it just worked great. I was able to get that in there. Now, for aesthetics reasons, I obviously cannot flip this down over. So we're going to probably lose some logos. Obviously, it's a splash and go. Like I said, it instantly got water on it. It looks amazing. So let's see. Let's check it out. I mean, you expect the 6,000 to feel like glass. It feels like it's what it's supposed to feel like. Um, 
you know, I, I'm a big fan of Sahiro products. I'm super excited about the 8000 because I want to compare it to the Sahiro 8000. Now, I have the Katayama 8000. I'm going to be um, doing videos on the Katayama products as well as the, I mean, I, we've got all kinds of stuff to share with you guys. So I'll be able to do some comparisons on the 8000s. But the Sahiro stone, the 8000, is kind of sticky. You have to soak it for a minute. They tell you it's not to soak it, but you do have to soak it for a minute. And it's kind of sticky at first. It's very glassy. So I'm able to, uh, to compare it to that. Now, for those of you who are using the Sahiro, like Rika products, the you know, Cirax, all, you know, this is instantly glassy. Did not have any type of stickiness to it. Okay. Now, for those of you who know me, you know that at this point in the game, I will start doing edge leading strokes. So when you, if you're a newbie and you see me switch it up, I'm just kind of letting you know, I'm going to start doing some edge leading strokes. And right now, what that means is I have the edge facing me and it is trailing. So as I sharpen, I'm pushing like away from me. And I'm putting pressure in spots as I move down. And if you are a sharpener, you know what a burr is. If you do not sharpen, as I move that way, metal is going this way. And it's causing it to come off at a microscopic level and a tether. We call that a burr. So when I go like this with my fingers, I'm able to feel the burr. I'm feeling that it's constant. I don't want some huge raging piece of metal coming out. I want like a nice micro, but it's definitely there. So we've done both sides of the knife. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do edge leading. And so the knife is at the same angle. And I'm actually, right now the edge is coming into me. It's going away. Into me. And I'm alternating strokes. The stone feels great. Definitely can see why people are a fan. Um... I mean, there's definitely a quality difference in these uh, Superstones, their version of Superstone. Do you, you feel like the inexpensive stones, you know, have an inexpensive feeling to it, even though they do get the job done? This is definitely a lot glassier. Uh, I have a Tajiro that was given to me by Ryan Swanson. If you haven't seen him, uh, we've got some videos by him. Again, I'll always put uh, links above. Ryan Swanson is amazing. He likes to finish on a to zero 4,000, which is super glassy. I almost feel like the, his, that to zero 4,000 is a little glassier than this, even though this is a 6,000. So what we've done is we've actually pushed metal. It, you, if you'll see under a microscope, and if I can find it, I'll put it up um, the way that the edge just really cleans up. So the last thing we're going to do now is I want to make sure this is clean. I don't want to like put this up bad. And I noticed that I did not flatten that stone. I'm going to call myself on it. Greg, you did not flatten that stone. So that means I have to mess the logo up. Um, my wife is laughing at me. I don't want to do it. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. And just see how flat the stone was. I mean, it was pretty damn flat. So I got lucky. But yes, we have some diminishing of the markings on the stone. It is, of course, something that does happen. And there you go. So we're not going to put it up dirty. Okay, so let's go over to the eight. We won't make that mistake again. I am human. Okay, so the eight is a beast. Let me see this. So this fit in there. That stand fits just like that. The eight, the base is just bigger. I mean, they even, they even like really, really, really made sure that you saw that the king was on there nice. They put the extra detail on there. It does not currently fit. 
um, at this distance. So, just so you know, if on this pond, the cast fly, it does not currently sit flush. Like there's nothing I can do for that. So it is a splash and go. So I'm going to splash. So I now know that this, and you don't honestly, you know, you don't need it. Um, that's what this base is for. Okay. So it has rubber feet. Let's test that out. I'm all gung ho. And I like it when things just suddenly happen on the show that just shows you how organic everything is. So we're going to make a little bit of a mess. I'm, I can at least level it on the, um, on here. So I don't make too much of a mess. Thank you. My wife. So I guess that maybe I can't, I don't know. We'll, we'll try. I'm glad I leveled this one. It definitely got a little bit of a, just a little bit off right in the middle. Okay. So we got that good. Okay. So we have a slurry. I'm preparing my wife mentally right now. It's going to get on the counter. Sorry. We'll, we'll clean the counter. So, um, let's see how it sticks. It's got a little slide to it. So the rubber feet on the base is not like amazing, but it, it feels like glass though. So the first thing I'll point out for those who are like me, who's a Sahiro fan, it is not sticky. It definitely feels a little smoother than the six. It doesn't feel a lot smoother. I mean, the six and the eight feel like really close together. You could almost, I almost, I think the Tajiro was just harder. And that's where I'm noticing the difference is just the softness of the stone versus the Tajiro 4000 is so hard. Um, so let's get a feel. Having to adjust my surroundings here. Okay, so like we said a minute ago, we got some edge leading strokes. Oh, I can see the mess. My wife behind me is going to grab me some paper towels. My wife is probably like, no, gray slurry everywhere. It's, it happens all the time. Okay, so we can make, we can try to minimize the mess. We don't need all of the slurry. Slurry management, that is terminology you guys need to know. I know a lot of you natural stone users know all about slurry management. So we want to make sure that the force is even. So you might want to, you know, put your hand like across it. So you don't have, um, you don't have like uneven pressure. So even if I put here, it can feel a little bit uneven. But again, uh, your edge leading strokes are at the same angle as when you were doing edge trailing. Now in general, there's some science from knife grinders that says it is not beneficial for the edge after 8,000 to do edge leading and it can actually put undue stress on the edge. It is very thin. Okay, so this is really good to help remove the burr, but we have a strop for that, okay? So, I don't wanna cut myself be very easy to do with all that we've done. Okay. Pure. I'm nice and messy, which is always great. 
So let's clean up our area real quick and then let's get the straps out. So right now with what we've done, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, like a quick test just to see. I know I've already used this paper, let's just see. I mean, what? I mean, seriously? Ow, ah, uh, I caught my nail. I saved my life. Like, look, like, listen, I need a paper towel. I need like a paper towel. I gotta do a paper towel test. Like, the push cut on that was amazing. We have not stropped this knife, folks. Okay, we have not stropped this knife. We did some edge leading. Me too. Okay. So, this is paper towel without stropping from the king. So it's a little tear. So it's not quite paper towel ready. Okay. Let's do a fold. No crease, but we fold. It just bit. Okay, so I'm gonna do a tomato test and a blueberry test without the strop, just to see. So we got the tomato. Make sure you guys can see what's going on. And, okay, let me turn it into me. It's kind of, now this, my wife was pointing out, this is a super soft, like, tomato. Sometimes people need a firmer tomato. Let's just see. Okay, so we're not quite. I mean, it's like wrinkly. Yeah, it's a wrinkly tomato, but I think a sharp knife, it shouldn't matter. So we're probably going to do the strop in a second. Let's try a much firmer tomato. We've got some discoloration on there. Let's go ahead and, and just see if we can do the tomato test on a riper. Okay, so something that's a little harder. The king progression without the strop was really good. Let's try a blueberry. You guys know I'm known for my blueberries. Can I get it blueberry sharp? Let's clean to clean it. So no strop. So I mean, we we did slice a blueberry. Let's uh, let's try again. So I'm gonna tell you guys, like I'm pretty impressed for not stropping the knife. I've got one more blueberry out here. Um, before we go. What are my thoughts as I do this? My thoughts are, I'm impressed. Uh, the, the title of the video is Still the King. I mean, it's, I'm, hard, I'm hard pressed to argue with the fact that it's very inexpensive. Um, do I love my Morihe stones? Yes. Am I a little bit partial to them? Yes. Do I love my Japanese natural stones? Yes. Do I think that this was a really great outcome for something that was very inexpensive? I believe it was incredible. Um, I don't mind King Stones calling them the King. Okay? So, my wife keeps telling me that the video is too long. Sorry, occasionally there's a pause because there needs to be a pause. I know you knife nerds like learning some stuff. If you're new to knives, then you need to, a moment to take it all in. I'm not going to rush to give you quality. I don't want to take too long, but I'm not going to, uh, to rush for the sake of rushing. I'm actually having to do something live in front of you right now. No camera tricks, and I have to be incredible without going abracadabra, and I went off camera and did something that you didn't see. I try to bring you every step so you know that it's authentic. We'll try the tomato again after this drop. Could it be the tomato? Yes. My wife says yes. So stropping matters. 
<laughs> that's a t-shirt design. That's, yeah, shopping matters. So um, that'll be on a shirt near you soon. Um, so let's do the blueberry. Because who the hell doesn't slice like slicing blueberries? So top off the blueberry. I'm reaching across here. It's down on the board. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally bit. Stropping matters. Um, I messed it up. I messed it up, okay? You can see it's in there, folks. I'm chasing it around the cutting board. Yeah, it's just, slid it's just sliding. But we want a blueberry video. Okay, definitely. Like was whoa. Blueberry paper. Blueberry paper, folks. I'm chasing it around the cutting board. Okay, so dropping matters. So that was done live. You know, no camera tricks, whatever. We went through all the king stones. Definitely a great investment. You probably don't need the eight. Um, and you definitely don't need the three if you do not have like extremely dull material. It's not going to put you out a lot of money to go from the one, the two, the six. The eight is a nice, uh, nice touch. Um, still the king. I don't know if I want to call that. I think for the price, for the quality and everything, it's, I definitely don't hurt them for taking the title. There are definitely a lot of great stones out there. A lot of them more, more expensive. Um, people live and die by these. I can definitely see why. High quality product for... From what I understand, they do dish out, but at that price point, you just replace them. So, from my wife, who thinks this video was way too long, from me, who did everything that it absolutely took to show you, we've now made a mess in the kitchen to clean. I thank you so much for joining us again, as always. Hopefully, we'll keep bringing you new content that you'll enjoy. Please leave comments. Um, we appreciate the feedback. Hit that like button. Let us know we did okay. Hit that subscribe button. And that, that, that bell that notifies you that we made some new stuff, because now we're making them on Tuesdays, Fridays. Sometimes we got stuff on Sunday. Sometimes we throw some stuff on like a Wednesday, just to let you know. So you want to be notified, hit that button. Thank you again. God bless. That was not a dull moment. Good night.